Pneumonia is an acute inflammation of the lungs, mostly as a result of infection, and it is the most common cause of infectious disease death in the United States. The underlying infection causing pneumonia can be extremely variable. For example, bacteria and viruses are the most common, but also fungi and even parasites are possible. In most cases, the specific microbe responsible for the pneumonia is not found. But because similar pathogens are found in certain environments, pneumonia generally gets divided into categories. The reason this is useful is because by knowing the environment, and therefore likely microbes the patient was exposed to, treatment can be tailored to cover those microbes. Community acquired is defined as pneumonia developed outside of a hospital setting, and the bacterial causative agents are divided into typical and atypical. It is commonly due to Streptococcus pneumoniae, also known as pneumococcus, as well as Haemophilus influenza on the typical side, and Chlamydia pneumoniae or Mycoplasma pneumoniae on the atypical side. The most common viral agents are respiratory syncytial and adenovirus, influenza, and more recently, coronavirus. Fungi can also cause CAP, but this is more common in immunocompromised people. CAP now also includes healthcare facilities like rehabilitation centres that were previously in a category known as healthcare-associated pneumonia. Hospital-acquired pneumonia is defined as developing more than 48 hours after admission to hospital, and ventilator-associated pneumonia when it develops more than 48 hours after intubation. Similar agents cause these two, including E. coli, Pseudomonas, and Staphylococcus aureus. Aspiration pneumonia occurs when external contents is introduced to the lung environment, such as gastric contents after vomiting or the use of a gastric feeding tube. The microbes involved here are similar to those in CAP and HAP, Pathogens are often introduced into the airways and lungs through the air, but there are defence mechanisms like coughing or proteases and salivary IgA in the upper airway, and cilia, surfactant and immune cells like alveolar macrophages in the lower airway that prevent infection. Pneumonia occurs when there is a large enough contamination to overwhelm the defences or when a particularly virulent pathogen is introduced. Other factors include when the defence mechanisms are compromised, such as impaired cilia function seen in smokers and those with Cartagena's disease, mucus accumulation such as in obstructive disorders or cystic fibrosis, an impaired cough reflex, or a state of immunosuppression. It is the alveoli in particular that are affected, and these factors can be affected by changes in normal flora, such as in malnutrition, systemic illness, and hospital exposures. The signs and symptoms generally include a cough, which may be productive, or even dry, which is especially the case in the very young or the elderly. There's also typically a fever, but this may also be absent in the elderly. Fatigue, malaise, and dyspnea on exertion are other common findings. There may also be chest pain, commonly described as pleuritic, meaning a sharp pain on inspiration and exhalation. And it's important to remember that pneumonia can present as altered mental status in the elderly and irritability in the very young. There is significant overlap between the symptoms despite the underlying infectious agent. Diagnosis includes the clinical history and suggestive physical exam findings such as crackles on auscultation or an area of dull percussion, combined with chest x-ray demonstrating infiltrates or areas of consolidation, meaning parts of the alveoli filled with liquid rather than air. Different patterns can be seen depending on the underlying pathology. For example, CAP typically has a consolidation of one segmental lobe called lobar pneumonia. Blood tests can help in confirming the presence of an inflammatory process, such as with leukocytosis and CRP, and procalcitonin may be used to help distinguish a bacterial from a viral cause. CT imaging can be done in some cases, 
especially if the diagnosis is uncertain or if the treatment is not working. Looking to exclude fungal pneumonia, an abscess, or a pulmonary embolism. Identification of the underlying pathogen is achieved in under half of cases, and due to empirical antibiotics usually being effective, there is generally no significant benefit in identifying the pathogen. Urinary testing for Legionella or pneumococcal antigens is readily available, therefore these are commonly done in those who have not improved on the initial therapy, or in those who are severely unwell. Polymerase chain reaction testing can also be an option on nasopharyngeal swabs or on bronchoalveolar lavage. The mainstay of treatment is empirical antibiotics, typically for CAP being amoxicillin or doxycycline, or in some areas, a macrolide like clarithromycin. In HAP, agents like cotramoxazole or coamoxiclav are options in the non-severe cases, or vancomycin, tazacin, or cabapenems like meropenem in severe cases or those with higher resistance risk. VAP examples also include these antibiotics. Neuraminidase inhibitors are options in viral pneumonia caused by influenza. This is a protein involved in helping the spread of influenza, but this treatment is not generally recommended in other viral pneumonias. In addition to the antibiotics, supportive therapy can include supplemental oxygen, intravenous fluids, and antipyrexials such as paracetamol, and in severe cases causing respiratory failure, particularly type 2 respiratory failure, then mechanical ventilation may be needed.